Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today on the channel, we have Peter Atia. I was actually recently recommended, once again, as I said last week, that I should react to doctors or members of the mainstream medical establishment, or at least people that have subscribed to the mainstream axioms of health, and I should react to people of that ilk. And so I chose Dr. Gundry first, but the first prototypical example that I was given was Peter Atia. So I thought, well, why don't I follow up next week by doing a video on Peter Atia? So, this video is a short one. It's 4 minutes and 54 seconds seconds. I'll probably figure out a way to turn it into 45 minutes. And it's entitled, Is Natural Sugar from Fruit Just as Bad, quote unquote, as Added Sugar? Now, if you've watched my channel long enough, you'll know what answer I will provide for that. However, if you're new to the channel, you'll find out in this one. So let's get right into this video. But first, please subscribe to the Patreon. I have a $1 a month tier that will be moved up to a $2 a month tier on April 1st, a $5 a month tier, and an $8 a month tier in order to gain access to one week early uploads, one extra video per week, ad-free content, uncensored content, and unblurred pop-up references on screen. I will eventually be removing the blurs from YouTube quite soon, I suspect, but for right now, it is still going to be remaining on my channel. So, that as well. And also, one final update about my book. My ebook for Contraindicated is available for pre-order as we speak. I will link that in the description below and also in the comment section below. And my paperback version will also be available on April 1st. The release dates for the book are on April 1st. I am attempting to get the hardcover scheduled for that same date by today, actually. Today is Monday, March 18th. So once that occurs, I will alert all of you guys, and then the audiobook will come a little later. But we are finally having official release dates. It's a month late, but hey, better than nothing. So with that being said, let's jump right into this video, which I suspect will be quite wrong, by the way. So if that's the case, really, outside of someone maybe with NAFLD... Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. ...have a hard time making the case to not eat an orange. Yeah, I think that... No, no, false. You can absolutely make that case, even for someone without NAFLD. Because, Peter, if you look at the biochemistry, which is a hard science, as opposed to this small, small area of science, which isn't science at all, it's theology, that being human nutrition science, again, in quotes, you'll see that fructose, which is the primary sugar found within fruit, is the same molecule no matter where you source it and what food you source it from. Therefore, it's metabolized the same. And if you look and observe and assess how fructose is actually metabolized in the body, if you're a sensible person, you'd think otherwise about recommending that someone continue to eat fruit and maintain their fruit consumption or perpetuate it. Fructose is metabolized the same exact way effectively as ethanol, drinking alcohol. It is immediately converted to fat in the liver and has the same metabolites once again as ethanol. It is a direct cause of NAFLD via that mechanism, Peter. It really is that simple. Sugar is sugar is sugar. There are some sugars worse than others, but there are not some food sources that are worse than others based on their sugar content per se, because if the sugar content and the ratio of sugar, or the ratios of sugar between both sets of food are the exact same, then the effect of the sugar on the body from those foods will be the same. Sure, fiber can blunt a spike. You're not preventing the introduction, however, of that sugar. It really is that simple. A gram of sucrose in white table sugar will have have the same effect on the body as a gram of sucrose from fruit. Things can affect its rate of absorption, like I just said, fiber, but that's not the point. Fructose is fructose, sucrose is sucrose, glucose is glucose, sorbitol is sorbitol, lactose is lactose, galactose is galactose. End of discussion. Fruits are fine. Including um, like... No, they're not fine, actually. They are not innocuous or benign. That rhymed. Including um, like fake fruits like grapes i call grapes fake <laughs> well, fruits. Are, yeah because they basically are they are we hybridized fruit to be bigger and sweeter and starchier in the case of bananas 99 percent of plants within supermarkets including all vegetables are man-made through genetic crossbreeding of plants it's the entire reason why grapes have galactose in them in their sugar profile how does a grape have galactose in it that's half of the disaccharide lactose that's found in milk what the hell have we been doing there are certain fruits that have uh, that are high in sugar. Um, wow! Tell me about it. I don't know who this person is. You know, mangoes, uh, f uh, figs. Oh my! What about oranges, sir? They're very, very enriched in fructose. Figs are probably something that we should right. avoid. F figs. Uh, okay, so then why is it fine to recommend other fruits that have exorbitant levels of fructose in them, but not recommend other fruits because of their exorbitant level of fructose in them? Okay, you contradicted yourself. Why are you espousing the supposed fact that fruit is fine, natural fruit is fine, and then simultaneously saying that figs should probably be avoided because of their fructose content? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, dates, yes. 
you know, mangoes are high. Uh, apples and um, pears, plums, they tend to be fairly high, like around nine, 10 grams. Okay, so let's just avoid fruit. Why, what, what is the problem here? Not to mention the fact that sugar is not the only constituent of fruit. You also have fiber, which is a contraindication in the human diet. You've also got deuterium, heavy hydrogen, okay? It slows the rate at which your mitochondria function, which causally leads to inflammation via a buildup of inorganic phosphate within the mitochondrial membrane, really. I think oranges are around six grams. Bananas are fairly high glycemic uh, and uh, they have a fair amount. Okay, well, you just referred to the glycemic index there, which is also complete nonsense because you cannot establish on a definitive basis what everyone's blood sugar response will be to one food. And you can't even establish what one person's blood sugar response will be to one food multiple times all the time because that depends on how much sleep the person got the night prior, their exercise activity that day, their exercise activity within the last week, their muscle mass, etc., etc. So sugar is sugar. You shouldn't be looking at glycemic index. Oatmeal can spike people's blood sugar as much as ice cream can, depending on who they are. Their glycemic indexes, however, are much different. Yeah. It goes, but it's probably in the range of six to eight grams. I think what we'll do in the show notes is we'll have our team pull together a table of- Yeah, I have a great table. Typical yeah. sizes, because I, I, this is actually yeah, news to me. I would have guessed fruits would have a little bit more, but it'll be good to, to know that. Yeah, no. I have a table already on the screen. It, most, it, fruits most fruits are between, are between uh, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, three grams, three grams and, and nine, nine, nine to ten grams, grams max. max. Um, um, and, and most fruits most are around, around four to six, six grams. grams. Some, Some fruits have... You know the dietary requirement for human beings of sugar? Zero grams. That easy. Less sugar, like kiwi, like berries, strawberries, blueberries. No, contraindicated, insalubrious, fiber, deuterium. Also, still some plant toxins. People in the space, well, not in the space, there's some interlopers in the space, honestly, that are still remaining that need to be dispensed with. But I'm particularly referring to Paul Saladino. Says that fruit has much less, or even in some cases, a complete absence of plant toxins. That's false, Paul. The reasoning that he gives to underpin that is because the plant wants you to actually eat its fruit. It's why it makes it colorful, etc., etc. No, it doesn't want humans to eat the fruit. It wants something to eat the fruit. It's typically animals that have grown around that and have evolved around that type of fruit. It wants those animals to eat it. It does not want other animals to eat them, okay? It's one of the reasons that pineapple actually still has quite a bit of oxalic acid in it. It's a fruit. Why don't you explain that, Paul? So no, there are still plant toxins within fruit, even if there's just a lesser amount. They're very healthy, people should. No, healthy is a cause and effect statement. Health is the absence of disease process, which means that healthy is a characteristic that can be conferred upon a food if that food is conducive to promoting health, or at least a slow, gradual absence and amelioration of disease process. There are no studies to inform upon that, sir. There are none. There are no studies to inform upon the benefit, hazard of any food, the risk of any heart health outcome or disease process, et cetera, et cetera, as that relates to any aspect of human nutrition over any given period of time throughout the entire time human nutrition science has existed. There never has been and there never will be. Encouraged to eat those and we actually... Okay, no, they're encouraged to be eaten by people like you that don't know what they're talking about. And we actually did a study. Oh, look at that. They did a study, guys. As soon as you say study, that raises necessary queries. Who were the authors of the study? For one, what was the conflict of interest? Any causal words used within that study? Yes, undoubtedly. What was the sample size? What was the demographic of people? Where we gave we gave people a low sugar diet where okay what people what was the demographic sir also what kind of sugar that matters too were they controlled were they locked in labs or was this based on respondent data where they told you yes or no whether they abided by the conditions and the protocols that were recommended and encouraged to be employed within their lives within the study because let me tell you something people lie also people forget there are a myriad of other confounders within these people's lives like when they wake up what their sleep schedule is how much blue light they're exposed to for example i mean the, the smallest granular details matter in science those aren't trivial. Perhaps they're trivial in practical matters. Science isn't practical. It's technical. It was low in refined sugar. Okay, refined sugar, it doesn't matter. Sugar is sugar is sugar. We already covered this in the beginning. As you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness, disorder, and disease one may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product in doing such a thing, is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule called Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be 
the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product and any hard health outcomes. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many other products from the Cerule company, please refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. Low in high fructose corn syrup, well, fantastic. High fructose corn syrup, in terms of its sugar ratios, is very similar to regular sucrose, actually. So, okay, so you cut out some sucrose, effectively. Great, that's good. Sucrose is half glucose, half fructose. Fructose being 7 to 10 times more glycating, perhaps even up to 11 times more glycating, I've heard, than glucose. And is also inconspicuous in terms of the damage that it induces because it is not detectable on an HbA1c test because it is specifically tailored to detect glucose. Glycation of hemoglobin. Um, and, uh, but we, uh, one group got, uh, natural fruit and the other. What do you mean by natural? That is a meretricious term adjunct to a word in order to adorn it. Insalubrious contraindicated nonsense. We restricted that too. So it was either a low fructose diet that was low fructose and all. Low is a value judgment statement. What are the numbers, sir? Tell us what the numbers were. Low relative to what? Goodness me. Aspects. The other was low sugar, low fructose, but you're allowed natural fruits so that actually. Okay, so it wasn't low fructose or low sugar. It wasn't. Sort of a modest total fructose intake. And when we did that, uh, we found equivalent improvement in metabolic syndrome. Equivalent improvement. What do you mean improvement? Metabolic syndrome is a construct. It's based upon proxy measures like high blood pressure, insulin resistance, which by the way is another construct. It's a construct within a construct. Fasting blood glucose. In fact, actually hearing some of these physicians and what they're basing metabolic syndrome upon, one of which is a big paunch. Metabolic, metabolic syndrome. syndrome has five factors. Yeah, explain it, elucidate it. Go ahead. What, the no, main... it's predicated upon five proxy measures. It doesn't have five factors. It's the big paunch. No, that's not the number one characteristic of it. That's a side effect of poor dietary input. Define big! Also, what were these people eating before? Compare a kiwi to a Twinkie, and yes, we will probably agree that the kiwi is more salubrious and more indicated for human physiology. Fantastic. Also, once again, what were these people doing? They weren't all performing the same activities. And so the, the presence of natural fruit did not block the ability of the of the low sugar diet to to reduce um or to improve so the takeaway here is don't drink it and don't consume added sugar and i think this is a no that's not the takeaway peter the takeaway is to not consume sugar because we know how sugar reacts within the body biochemically speaking all of the carbohydrates that are needed to be utilized by the body are created through gluconeogenesis a demand driven process usually that is carried out by the liver through non-glucose precursors such as 19 out of 21 amino acids and the glycerol backbones of odd chain fatty acids after the metabolism of them through beta oxidation primarily in the form of glucose, which can be isomerized into fructose if necessary. Exogenous glucose is a toxin. For anyone that's new on the channel, let me explain to you why. Glucose is a six carbon aldehyde. It's an aldohexose. Aldehydes, even in vastly small concentrations, destroy lipid rafts, tear cell membranes to pieces, bind to DNA to promote carcinogenesis by causing mutations to it, and in a high enough concentration but still relatively low, kill cells outright. The underpinning factor, the common denominator between all manifestations of cancer is DNA damage. And we do know that glucose binds to DNA and causes mutations to it. So speculate what you'd wish with that. Thing for people to, um, right. to differentiate, right? So no, no, Peter, false. Total sugar amount is what matters, not the source. Sugar is sugar is sugar. If you took sugar from a processed food, ultra processed is really what we should be saying because all food is processed, like a Pepsi or a Twinkie, and you put it under a microscope and compared it to a sugar molecule from fruit, it's the same. God. Sugar is when a food has sucrose or high fructose corn syrup are typically the most common agents that are added right. and it's literally added to the food. So if you have, if you go out and get a jar of pasta sauce, it, they added sugar to it. They yeah. Typically. Yes. Doesn't matter if the sugar was added or not. Sugar is sugar. It, Absolutely. It, that, that's not the sugar that you're seeing from the tomatoes that go into making that. It's the. It doesn't matter. It's sugar, Peter. This is pseudo sophistication in order to justify one's addiction, whether they realize it's an addiction or not.
deliberate addition of sucrose or high fructose corn syrup to make it taste sweeter. And remember that the intestine does act as a shield for up to like five or four to six grams of fructose. So if you eat four or five grams of fructose in a fruit, the, the intestine's going to protect you. In addition, the intestine, you have fiber in a natural fruit and that slows the absorption. So the concentration- It also abrades the enteric nervous system. Fiber is a contraindication in the human diet. There are only two associative factors when it comes to diverticulosis, which is an outpouching or breaking down of the distal colon, which can lead to infection and early death if left untreated. And that is increased fiber intake and increased number of bowel motions per day. There was only one study conducted in 2012 that was published in the World Journal of Gastroenterology that even remotely attempted to control for confounding variables. In fact, it's actually the best we have, despite its incredibly small sample size, in which they took less than 100 people that presented with idiopathic constipation, split them up into three groups, one of which reduced their fiber intake, one of which maintained it, and one of which completely eliminated fiber from their diet, and the only group that actually witnessed and experienced a complete amelioration of all of their symptoms of constipation, which didn't just include blocking, but also anal bleeding and bloating, invariably was every single person within the no fiber group. They had a bowel motion of approximately once per day. The group that maintained the fiber intake had a bowel motion of one every 6.83 days, so basically once per week, and saw no amelioration. Any studies that claim to show fiber's efficacy in ameliorating constipation only look at stool size and transit time, and not actually fiber's efficacy in ameliorating constipation. Who the f*** cares about stool size and transit time? That's not what matters. It increases mucus secretion as a result of abrading the gut, and it also increases immune dysregulation, which also subsequently causes increased mucus secretion. It ferments into acetate and lactate, which are gluconeogenic precursors that that can travel to the liver to be converted into glucose indirectly via gluconeogenesis. It does ferment into short-chain fatty acids, one of which is butyrate. Beta-hydroxybutyrate is one of the main ketone bodies that is produced when in ketosis. So actually you don't need to eat fiber to reap that benefit. So you shouldn't be eating fiber. This that gets to the liver is lower, so there's less ATP depletion. Now, what about dry versus pseudo sophistication? Nonsense. Ridiculous. That was just obfuscation. Now, what about dry versus not dry? So if you take um, dried apples, so if you if you if yeah. you take the equivalent of apple chips versus apple. Hey Peter, um, I have a very good answer for you. It's very efficient and it's very terse. Sugar is sugar, and you shouldn't eat it. Carbohydrates basically hold two to three grams of water for every gram of carbohydrate you consume as well. So if anything, the added water may provide less of a dehydration status after consuming sugar. That doesn't mean that it's a pro. I'm just entertaining the idea and the question here take equal amounts of the actual calories. So it's just you eat calories, you don't eat calories. Check out my channel to find out more about that. You don't eat calories. Every single person's calorie intake necessarily on the face of the planet is zero. You can't eat them. We see one is a lot bigger because it's got more water and things in it. What's the difference in how we metabolize that? Yeah, the this is just bread and circuses. Quit eating sugar. The problem with dry fruit is that it still has all the fructose, but a lot of the good things are, are remove good things value judgment statement and a vapid superficial one at that good i'm going to infer that he is implying salubrious and health promoting and i already covered that rewind to find out again why that's inappropriate to use many of those things aren't good actually so that's the problem dried fruit is sort of like candy fruit in general is candy sir Okay, well, I guess that was it. Just ridiculous. This is just pseudo-sophistication, and it's bread and circuses. It's what Freud called the narcissism of small differences. It doesn't mean anything. You're missing the entire point. Sugar is sugar is sugar. End of discussion. Really hope you enjoyed the video. Please, if you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and also comment your thoughts below. And also, once again, subscribe to the Patreon. $1 a month tier, $5 a month tier, and $8 a month tier. Again, moving the $1 a month tier up to $2 a month on April 1st. And also, if you are experiencing inflammation of any kind, some remaining inflammation, and you've already adopted a carnivore diet and have cut out carbs and have also omitted other plant toxins from your diet and you just need an extra punch or an extra kick, I would recommend referring to the link on the screen below, the Cerule link. If you want to know more about how those products work, which I would recommend people do before just buying something cursorily, I would go ahead and refer to the video that you will see at the top right of the screen called Cerule Products. It is a thorough elucidation and explanation of what those products are and why I take it every single day. So please go ahead and refer to that link below. Also, buy my book, Contraindicated, a closer look 
outlook and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness disorder and disease for over a century. When that book is out, the release date is now officially April 1st. My ebook, once again, as I said in the beginning, is available for pre-order on Kindle. I will link that below in the description and also in the comment section below. And the paperback is scheduled to be released on April 1st as well. And I'm trying to get the hardcover scheduled for that date as well as soon as today. Audiobook will come later. I'd have to re-record those files, unfortunately, which is going to be a very laborious, tedious task. So follow me on Instagram and especially Twitter. I am going to start attempting to post my YouTube videos onto X just to hedge against any potential threat of censorship that I may have the very honor and privilege of facing very soon on YouTube. I'm a very incipient and co-it channel. However, I suspect that that won't be the case for much longer. And once I pick up traction, I pick up notoriety on YouTube and therefore I raise my propensity for being censored or even shadow banned. So please go ahead and follow me on X just to hedge against that. So if my channel is taken down, you can still view my videos. Also email me at edgoki14 at gmail.com if you have any questions. And with that being said, join me next time when we decide to eviscerate another claim that may be superficial or may be pseudo sophisticated or both about anything relating to science in any respect, really biochemistry, human physiology, paleoanthropology, statistics and research methods, etc, etc, etc. So see you then.